All right, let's go check him out. Okay, so we'll talk to him in a minute. I want to look at his belongings first. These cigarettes are filled with cheap tobacco. Nothing interesting. A cheap watch. Bought with his own money, no doubt. So this is the gun that Leighton was holding when he was caught by the police. It is a Webley revolver, a reliable weapon. And it seems as though the shells were not removed from the cylinder. Looks like it was fired, though. Two shots were fired. Look. Two out of the six shells have been fired. There were two shots. It's not looking good for him. What can we deduct? But they're the same gun, so how would that... Turner could hear the contrast between two fired shots as in fact three shots were made. At first a single shot was fired and then two guns fired simultaneously directly afterwards. Hear the contrast between... That might be true. I have to do something to it though. We'll we'll leave it and find out a little bit later. Let's see if there's anything new. Kenneth Butler and Brian Vercotti were the victims of double murder. Carried out by one person, so that doesn't make sense. So that's more realistic. Okay, well we'll we'll again there's still lots. Lots to judge here. Getting my facts in. Witness testimonies in the crime weapon clearly point to one possible culture at Leighton Chapman. It's not looking good for Leighton, but anything could happen. Okay. So we've checked his stuff. Let's go actually interrogate him. That him there? Please escort. Oh man. Good evening, Mr. Chapman. Who are you? I've got nothing to say. It's all a mistake. He does look like a Calm him, he? down, Leighton. I have come here to help you. To find out if you truly are innocent, as your younger brother Wiggins has told me. My brother? You know him? Then that means you're Sherlock Holmes. Oh, blimey. All right, Mr. Holmes. I'll tell you everything. Good. Let's profile him first. He's got a nasty scar on his face. I saw something be highlighted. Looks like bruising. But he still resisted arrest. Fancy scarf. So he has a de he's got a desk job. And he served time. For something else. Good. Tell me your account of what happened. I left my work and I hurried up to see the fireworks in Whitechapel. I was late, so I decided to cut through off Moon Street. I saw the first fireworks light up in the sky. I bumped into a constable on a corner before entering off Moon. And then suddenly, what with all the firework flare, I saw two men. They were both lying flat in the middle of the street. I stopped where I was. I, I thought about turning back to the police, but as I was thinking of that, I saw a fur person. He was leaning over the body that was furthest from me. The second I saw him, he raised his head and he stared at me. In a flash, I saw his gun, but he made a dash for it instead and he escaped through Whitechapel Street. So you might still have had time to return to the constable. I panicked. 
I didn't know what to do. Anyway, I, I approached the bodies just to see if they were still alive. You should have went to the, the car. Blood pumping out of his stomach. He was dying. It was horrible. The second one was already dead. He had a hole in his head. He was holding a gun in his hand, though. I took it. And then I followed the third man. Why would you do that? It just made you look... It just made you look like you did it. So if two shots were, t were, were taken, it was by them. Interesting. Pray, continue. I turned the corner, and I saw the man standing in the middle of the street. He seemed to be in some, some sort of panic. And then, Mr. Holmes, something strange happened. I told the police, and they laughed at what I said, but I swear to you, my words are true. I started running towards him. But then I was blinded by a flash. It was so bright that I hardly saw anything for a good dozen seconds. But I kept running forward. As I arrived in Whitechapel, I heard a woman screaming. And then I was caught by the police. But there wasn't a trace of that man. Of course, then they found a gun and all that blood. I couldn't see the murderer escaping and all that mess. Perhaps I was still half-blinded at that moment. A thrilling account, my young man. The third man. Layton, are you able to describe the person whom you saw standing in Half Moon Street? Well, I wasn't able to see his face at all. It was too dark, and he was too far away. I could see his silhouette. Hmm, and what about that? Nothing so special. He was wearing a jacket. He was quite average in, in size and his weight. I see. Was there anything else that struck you at the time? No. But perhaps... It's strange, but... I can't remember the sound of his footsteps as he was running away. Perhaps it was because of the fireworks or, or the surprise of me seeing him. Leighton, I confess I am puzzled. Why should a young lad like you take a gun from the hands of a dead man and set off in pursuit of a probable killer? I know. I keep wondering that, but at the time it was... It was like a reflex. A criminal ought to be arrested. And he was armed. You were willing to risk your life. That was a little foolish. Unless you wanted revenge. No, Mr. Holmes. I was just being brave and stupid. Um, there's just being brave. Aha. I'm sure that you were, but... I believe that you may have recognized one they of both the victims, had the tattoo. Brian Vercotti. You knew that gentleman well, did you not? <laughs> However, could you know that? You both went to you prison. You have a typical tattoo of the Westgate Brotherhood upon your hand. I observed exactly the same mark upon Mr. Vercotti. You came to know him from your sharing a past prison sentence. Am I correct, Mr. Chapman? Oh, God. You're right, Mr. Holmes. They were close. They must have been. And he probably told him, he said, go get the fucker. Here you go. And he get, probably gave him his gun. Would you tell me a little about Brian Vercotti? We were convicted for a robbery. Once in prison, both of us joined one of these fraternities. During that year, we tried to help each other out, you know? Now you were quite young then, I believe. Yes, Mr. Holmes, we were. We'd only stolen a pound of meat. After we were released and... When I saw what my little brother had become, I decided to work towards living an honest life. And Vercotti? He had a hard time. His sister had died in a Whitechapel dispensary while he was in prison. He had no family anymore. Our path split. He fell back into crime. So you lost him? Yes. And for around two years, I heard no news of him at all. We shall see you soon, young man. Very interesting. This is going to be a really good one. The violent crime committed in Half Moon, Half Moon Street by Leighton could have had a personal motive. What else we got? Imaginary man. The person whom Leighton Chapman describes in his statements is a figment of his own imagination created to have indicated. Is it though?
Leighton Chapman committed a double murder at Half Moon Street. An old mutual enemy between... You could end it right now. No, we're not done yet. Look at that. You can already just, you know, end it. That's crazy. Well, let's hold off. We're not done yet. No way are we done yet. All right, what's next? Investigate the ancient bracelet and find out how it could have appeared. I gotta perform a reenactment. Okay, before I do that, I wanna go examine the ancient bracelet. So we're gonna go to the archives. Oh, crap. So we'll go back to Baker Street. This could be one of those smaller ones. I don't know why you'd want to do that. Like, I mean, I that just quickly finish it. That would have been the shortest, uh, shortest uh, one to date. Oh, to where's Toby? Is she still there? I'm curious. Oh my God, bro. Like, why? Why is that in the game? Like, what are you doing? Hello, Toby. All you need now is a shawl and a mop cap, and you could be Mrs. Hudson's younger sister. <laughs> All right, antique bracelet. I think we need encyclopedias and art and architecture, maybe? Economic, technology, history, something under relics. I'm gonna keep going with research. Chemistry, poisons, wounds, criminalistics, martial arts, symbols. That is not. That is. Hmm. Maybe it's in the newspaper. So you have to look for Ram. It's not there. Whitechapel murders? That is not. Isn't that from last time? From uh, Testament of Sherlock Holmes? Well, there's new. Oh no. East Africa. It's gotta be somewhere here. It's gotta be under art. That is not. That is. Technology. It's not. Oh, maybe Greek history. That is not. Okay. Roman? That is not. Prussian. That is Ancient. That is. That is. Medicine. Yo, it's not here. Like. That. That is. That is. That. 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 That is. That is not. That is not. That is. <laughs> that is. That. 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 <laughs> that is. That. 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 What is it then? Here it is. Whoa! I skipped it. I was going too fast. I need to continue my research in my archives. One second. What the hell did I just pick up? A part of an ancient jewel set that belongs to the. How did I miss that? 
These beautiful antique jewels represent a part of the Hel Helen Hellenistic treasures collection. Depicted are the five heads of mountain rams upon a bracelet, necklace, and ring, each made of pure gold. Five rams of mythylene uh, have been missing from the museum since 1885. It's there from the, the museum. So maybe there's a robber we can go into. This one. Treacherous theft. The Hellenistic treasures were stolen yesterday evening while being transported by cab on the way from the British Museum to the Glassford Fine Art Exhibition. Pawn shop owner Kenneth Butler. We know that name. Where did I... Where do we... We met a guy named Kenneth Butler. Contacted Scotland Yard that night and provided information regarding a gentleman who had attempted to sell him a collection of historical art at his pawn shop in Church Street. The police have seen captured, have since captured this scribe man, a professional thief by the name of Vincent Foley, who had been in the process of escaping London via the port. He was recognized by the surviving driver of the cab that had transported the collection of Hellenistic treasures. Vincent Foley refused to confess as to where the remainder of the treasures were hidden. He was eventually imprisoned. The lost treasures are still to be found. Here it is. <coughs> Crazy. One of the victims, Kenneth Butler was involved in the story of the stolen right. Hellenistic treasures. A visit to his pawn shop should tell me more. He was a victim. So he owned the pawn shop, but he, he was involved somehow. So that's probably where the key's for. Well, shit. Figuring this out very well. For you. <laughs> Mr. Butler's key matches the lock perfectly. Well, it makes sense. What can we find here? Maybe there'll be more of it. Crampons and a sharp ice axe would only be brought here by a mountaineer. You probably find some pretty interesting stuff in here. Right, okay, I'll have to come back for that. There's a revolver of some a sort. Flare. flare. Perhaps it was pawned by a destitute sailor. A lot of stuff of interest here. Hey, stop. That looks like it. It's got the rams on the it. The ram's heads. This necklace belongs to the five rams of Mytilin collection. Interesting. That means that Kenneth Butler owned a part of this collection all this time, ten years after the theft. Got a letter behind. Hello, Kenneth. I remember you once told me about three pieces of golden jewelry with ram heads from ancient Greece. You still got them, right? Well, good news for you. I found a man loaded with money who's crazy about those jewels. He's ready to fork out a small fortune. I can arrange a meeting with this money bag for you, but I want you to cut me in on the deal. I'll be waiting for you at the crossing of Great Alley and Half Moon Street on Sunday evening before the fireworks. Well, now it makes sense how all this got here and what it was over. Long lost art and Butler's jewels. Nope.
Things have changed. The search for the missing Hellenistic treasures could have been a motive for the crime that was committed in Half Moon Street. Mr. Turner picked up the bracelet directly after the murder, but the ring is still missing. Robbery. So basically, so you can make it personal or if it's about robbery. Why is it always coming down to Chapman? Well, we got to find more information. Do we have any more clues? Okay. Let's hold up. We're not, we, there's still probably lots to do. It looks as though Mr. Butler kept a careful record of his operations. Let's check it out. Maybe not. Let's not check it out. A fl Is there anything else? Probably gonna have to come back for this then. Let's check something. Okay, let's go back and recreate the uh, the incident. We'll see if there's anything that we can find. Something's telling me that, like I said, maybe Buddy was telling the truth. The fact that he has a record is just hurting his chances of being acquitted. Great to lie street. Oh, Ali. Ali. Can he solve this in the course of a night? I think he can. What's up with you, lad? What are you waiting for? I'm waiting for my brother to be released. Your brother? The one that you caught, beat up and imprisoned. Ah. The murderer. He ain't killed no one, copper. Watch your mouth, lad, else you'll be joining that worthless brother of yours. Wow, that's pretty mean. He got shot in the head, so we'll stay with him. Unable to see any higher. Ah. I need to find something to lift my lamp. Where was that? Bro. Dude, where is it now? Ah, here it is. This should be useful. We'll see if it really was him. Ha, wait, nothing no. interesting here. So it wasn't him. So let's try and say he was the one who did it and shot him in the stomach. That way we know. I saw something. This is most definitely a bullet hole. The brick cracks are fresh. So Buddy shot twice. I don't know how he missed Watson, point blank. There was a third shot fired in this street. Okay, let's add stuff. Third shot. 
two victims. Kenneth Butler. Kenneth, or I'm going to say there's crossfire. Making this all weird. At the same time. Oh, it's probably from the imaginary man. We'll say this. We'll just like wait, hold off on it for a bit. Oh, hold on. Maybe there's more deductions. I never thought of that. Disappearing man. Leighton Chapman's statement regarding the jacketed man who disappeared at Half Moon Street now seems reasonable, as the three shots at the crime scene prove the presence of a second gun. <laughs> So I'm going to have to prove that somehow. Reenact Meryl's pursuit. Okay, let's talk to him. Who he went after. And the guy probably disappeared behind something. And Buddy got blamed for Constable it. Constable Marrow, I would value your assistance in this investigation. It would be my pleasure, Mr. Holmes. I would like to make sure that there are no places in Half Moon Street where a man could hide while you were running through it with your lamp. All right, Mr. Holmes, what should I do? Take your lamp and start walking, just as you did before, and try to find me. Understood. So I just got to start picking dark spots to hide in. Or I am. <laughs> I am playing as the Kappa. I can see you very well, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. <laughs> this is cool. We're playing hide and seek. Never know. No, this is not how I walked at the time of the crime. I was more attentive. Let's start over again. <laughs> Basically, he's saying the moron controlling me doesn't know where I went. Oh, he's right there. Here you are, Mr. Holmes. All right, Constable. Let's try again. I'll find another place to hide. It's got to be bright enough that you can see, you know. I love how the bodies just don't change. Mr. Holmes, it wasn't difficult to find you at all. It is obvious now. No one could escape Constable Marrow's lamp while hiding in the street. Meaning, somebody must have been on a roof. Ergo, 